How's it going everyone? It is Andre Williams and today we're going to be talking about Ebon and we're going to be talking about Mara. I know what you're saying. What about SOS? What about Hive? I'm going to be talking about those two stocks on the weekend, but today I wanted to talk about Mara because they are one of the market leaders in this particular space, which is cryptocurrency. And it's very important for you guys to be aware of that because then you can get an idea of how one moves compared to the other, especially with the Chinese stocks in this space as well. So what I'm gonna be covering in Ebon, we know we're gonna be doing a technical analysis, and then we're also gonna be going over the press release that they released today, which is in regards to actually their follow-up with Hindenburg. I know there was a lot of criticism on the original follow-up and the fact that they're gonna take it even further it's something to look out for because I feel like this will definitely have an effect on the stock price and it will also have an effect on how shareholders are going to feel about the stock. Now, in regards to Mara, the reason why I'm talking about it, it's definitely been showing some price action that I want you guys to be aware of. And then secondly, what we're going to be getting into, maybe secondly, maybe thirdly, and then thirdly, what I'm going to be talking about right now, as far as how Bitcoin is actually performing, it is continuing to consolidate and build support in that high 50 area. If you're not aware of what that is, that's between the 57 to the 59K area. We've seen it already hit 60 and 61, but where it is, is right now building up support and consolidating is actually really good because when it does make that move it's going to be a strong move and that's going to be reflected in the stocks that we talk about on this channel and in the overall space in general so just want to make sure you guys are aware so let's get into those videos and I'll be giving you guys my final thoughts afterwards all right so we're going to be doing a technical analysis on marathon digital holdings aka Mara so we're going to take a look at the overall performance on the day ended up closing the day at 49 and you can see here it ended up being down 1.65 percent when we take a look at what the low on the day was it was at 46 dollars and 85 cents and then when we take a look at the high it was at 52 dollars and 11 cents so using this information that we have one thing that we want to be aware of is the support and the resistance areas that we saw today so one of the things that we want to take a look at first thing in the morning it ended up reaching its high over here right at where it hit some resistance at $52.11. But we could definitely see here, there's a clear area of resistance right here at $52. We ended up having a very strong sell-off here right in the early parts of the day. You can see we end up hitting down at the low right here around 11.35, hitting that $46.85 level, as you can see down below. So seeing this area, of, it was a definitely a strong area of support because it bounced off right away. And as the day continued, started up building up newer levels of support as you can see we had some support here at 47.64 then moved up and then started showing some support here at 48 dollars and 50 cents so what i want to show you guys very quickly is a three month chart so if we take a look at this three month chart here gives you an idea of how mara actually moves and considering where mara is price wise i definitely want to see it get back above the 21 day ema and with the bullish behavior that we can expect to see from bitcoin and the upside and you guys already know that i want it to reach 100k before the end of the year um, I definitely see it getting back to this previous high you see over here of $56.88. Of course, it's an area of resistance, but I definitely see Mara getting right through it along with momentum that we'd get from Bitcoin. So if you're looking at Mara in the sense of, hey, is this an opportunity to add? If you believe and you're bullish on Bitcoin, then it most definitely is. You really can't go wrong, especially since it's not too far off from the high. But as far as any more room to go down, we'd have to see a drastic decline in regards to Bitcoin's price and so forth. So the fact that it's actually doing a very good job, it's staying on trend. And if we take a look even at the three month history, this is pretty much how this chart actually looks. This is a very volatile stock in a volatile space, right? Cryptocurrency. So just be aware once it's able to get past that resistance level right here that it has at $51 on the three month of course and this is on the one hour then we could definitely look forward to seeing a strong move to the upside and then reclaiming back yes as you can see up to $56 and the reason why I actually added this in the video I know it's something new it's something different but I want to make sure you guys are aware if you're in one particular play I know we've kind of focused on the Chinese stocks but you need to know what's going on overall in the market and what the top leaders are actually doing so we're now on the official eBank international web Website, and we're going to take a look at their latest press release and it says eBank International to address the shareholders in an open letter. So let's check that out very quickly, see what the details are. So eBank International to address the shareholders in an open letter. 
Hangzhou, China, April 9, 2021, Global Newswire. eBank International Holdings, Inc., a blockchain technology company in the global market, today announced that it plans to address the shareholders in an open letter at the beginning of next week to respond to allegations in the short seller report issued by Hindenburg Research on April 6, 2021. In the open letter, the management will reaffirm its vision for the company's future and provide updates to ongoing expansion plans. Such letter is further expected to reaffirm the company's commitment to create value for all shareholders and take whatever necessary and appropriate actions that may be required to protect the interests of its shareholders. So hey, this is something exactly what we want to see from eBang. They're being prompt. There is a lot of criticism in regards to the original response that they had and the fact that they're gonna be taking it a step further and addressing every point that was made by Hindenburg is something actually that gave a lot of confidence to investors as they stated and hey i just like that they're taking this route so we're going to be doing a technical analysis on ebang aka ebon so let's take a look at the overall performance on the day so ended up closing at five dollars and eight cents so being up 0.89 percent ended up seeing a low of five dollars and one cents and ended up seeing a high of five dollars and 32 cents so one of the things that we want to take a look at are key areas of support that we are noticing one thing to keep in mind this chart that we're looking at is the five day five minute chart so we just want to take a look at the most recent trend and see how the stock has been doing and also today is friday so if we take a look now we definitely Definitely have some clear area of support right at this five dollar level we ended up challenging this level yesterday and many of you were able to catch this where it ended up getting down here to around four dollars and 95 cents which is definitely a great buying opportunity even if you take a look down here at the rsi it definitely does tell you that and you can see it right over here and this is back on april the 6th ended up getting even down to as low as around whoa to nine so just taking that into consideration you already know ebon is definitely due for a run-up and i see that coming next week when that open letter is actually released and we take a look now at areas of resistance so we already knew that they had a high today of five dollars and 32 cents so that was definitely a clear area of resistance they were unable to get back to that area if we check out the next level that they tried challenging around the afternoon time around 12 was five dollars and 20 cents and then literally just started struggling for the rest of the day like many other stocks today and just could not and was not able to actually really have much momentum above that five dollars and nine cents area but that's okay because i do see it coming back and reclaiming and coming back above that 200 day at five dollars and 20 cents and again it was above that in the early parts of the day so one thing i wanted to show you guys very quickly is a one month chart as far as what's going on with eBang. And as you can see from all the indicators that we use, which is a 200 day, the 100 day, and as well as a 21 day EMA, whew, this is a big time buying opportunity. Like you really can't go wrong in this particular area. Even if you take a look quickly down here at the RSI, this is very low, right? This is literally around, just to kind of be exact for you guys, around 39. So to RSI of 39 is actually really good. Is there more room for eBang to potentially go down? Yes, there can be. And that's part of that. And that's what the indicators are telling us. It is on a downtrend. But at the same time, this could be seen as an opportunity if you believe in eBang long term. Okay. Now, let's take a look at the three month chart. So looking at the chart three months out and so forth, like I said, it's still below the indicators, no surprise there. Just showing how much more this is of an opportunity. And if you take a look at the RSI here, look at this, this is well below 30. This is in the low 20s. So that's what I'm saying. This is a big opportunity here. And if we take a look, let me just go even further out for you guys. eBank does have this tendency to go through these lows and then come back up, go through these lows, come back up, go through these lows, come back up, go through these. So I'm definitely wanting to see this pattern actually being repeated and it's part of the reasons why I am still bullish on eBang overall in general, especially when it's in the sector of the Bitcoin, AKA cryptocurrency. So we're now on fintel.io and we're gonna be taking a look at the short interest for eBond. So if we take a look, the short volume ratio is at 14%. 
And as we scroll down, there's 4 million short shares available. And this is of April the 9th, so the most recent. So as we scroll down on the page, you can see here, since we have the last update at April the 8th, we can see in the past it was actually a lot higher, seeing 24 on the 7th, seeing 20 on the 6th, and also seeing on April the 5th, it was at 25.39. Before that, prior, as you can see, it usually kind of stayed inside the teen area, and it's kind of gone back to the teen area. But I'll be looking forward to see what happens next week because we should see some significant changes and some moves to the upside the fact that they did their opening letter so for my final thoughts on ebang international ticker symbol ebon this is great news to actually hear the fact that they're actually taking it a step further and responding to Hindenburg in a letter just shows that, you know what, they're really trying to make sure shareholders are at ease and they do run a legitimate business. When they responded back previously, there was a lot of criticism and they said, hey, you know what? No, we're going to go back and we're going to be doing this even better. So as far as the stock price is concerned, I definitely do see some movements coming up next week. Someone asked me a question in regards of what price do you think Ebon is good at? And I was definitely saying, and I said this in the previous video, which is why you guys need to make sure that you're watching these videos. You had the opportunity to get it below $5. That was a hell of a deal. Can it pull back even further? Yes, there is a possibility that can happen depending on what the market conditions are. And again, it's a stock market at the end of the day. So one of the things to be aware of, if it goes below five, that's an opportunity to take a look at. I know it closed above five. So hey, we got to see what's going to be happening on Monday and take advantage of those opportunities when they do come. That also makes you want to put in a disclaimer. I am not a financial advisor and this isn't financial advice. You just know when you do invest, you're doing it at your own risk. So now to go over Mara very quickly here. Yes, Mara is definitely feeling a bit of a pullback here being at that $50 level. But I do believe that since Mara is one of the leaders in this space, along with Riot, has a lot more room to run, especially when Bitcoin runs as well. Mara is also a great stock in regards if you're trying to trade off short term or you're trying to do some swing trades. It's very consistent, very volatile. Again, it provides a great opportunity for anyone who's interested in day trading that particular stock. But as far as my overall stance, which you guys already know, I'm very bullish on Bitcoin and know that it's going to be hitting 100K sometime this year. And because of that fact, a lot of of these stocks that are in this particular industry are all going to benefit. Hope you guys found this helpful and we'll talk soon. Peace.